There's only two reasons that men and women differ. One is cultural and the other is biological. I know everyone's shocked when they hear this. This isn't shocking news. I think she will have a good platform to become a civil engineer, to become a CEO of a company. That is what people who think that the differences between people who are primarily culturally constructed believe but it's not what the evidence suggests. I think we need to learn boys to be more sensitive. Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. In this video, we are gonna be watching a classic Jordan Peterson debate from all the way back in 2018, when he went on some random Swedish TV show and challenged the cultural orthodoxy of political correctness in Scandinavia and also gender equality. Not only are we going to be highlighting here how ridiculously sharp he was and how silly some of the points that they made are, but also I do believe that there's a lesson to be learned from how Dr. Peterson conducts himself here that we could all use. And just remember that this is back in 2018 when Jordan Peterson was going around and saying the truth on TV and debating these various different journalists and TV show hosts and everybody was shocked and offended by this truth. So obviously this woke Swedish panel has a preconceived idea of who he is and what he stands for and it is visible by their facial expressions alone. So with that, let's get into it. Why, why do you think so many young men are following you? Because you, you, have, you, you have a lot of your own. Because I want the best men. for them, genuinely. But, I'm encouraging but, but them. More than you do for young women? No, no, not at all. So not why, why do you think so many are young men? Oh, well, I think part of it's um, technological fluke. I mean, I, I came to prominence, at least in part, on YouTube, because I put my university lectures there, and it happens to be the case that 80% of the people who watch YouTube are young men. So there's that, and it, it's hard to know how to factor that in exactly. But then I'm also, I think that young women are encouraged a lot, which is fine as far as I'm concerned, but I think that that's less true uh, for young men now, because we believe that there's something pernicious about male competence and activity. It's part of a, I suppose, it's part of the notion that the best way to characterize Western society is as a tyrannical patriarchy, which is a appalling doctrine as far as I'm concerned. Uh, how come is that? Well, it's not a tyrannical patriarchy. Mm. So it's not tyrannical, that's the first thing, mm. certainly not compared to any other governmental form that currently exists and has ever existed. and. It's not essentially patriarchal, unless you believe that women haven't contributed in immense part to the construction of what we have now. So, and, and I also don't believe that to the degree that it is patriarchal, that its structure is dependent on the expression of power, arbitrary power on the part of men. I think that happens sometimes, but only when things go wrong. What, what, what you're doing and doing now as well is, is, is challenging the, the, the idea of gender equality that is very important in, 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 um, in Scandinavia. I think it's, it's as you probably know. Mm. Um, wh why, why do you think that that can be a problem, the, the idea well, of I gender equality? I, I don't think that equality of opportunity is a problem. I think that's a great thing and that anyone with any sense champions equality of opportunity. I mean, even if you're purely selfish, say, and purely self-centered, you'd want to set up an economy where everyone who had ability could be maximally exploited by everyone else, because then we can all benefit from each other's talents. And so equality of opportunity is an absolutely useful fundamental principle. So where's but the that problem? has nothing to do with equality of outcome. Those things aren't even in the same conceptual universe. And to strive for equality of outcome is, well, it's a fool's game and likely to be extraordinarily, it has proved to be in the past, extraordinarily dangerous as well as impossible. So, I mean, one of the things we know, for example, is that I don't know to what degree it's common knowledge in Scandinavia, but the biggest differences between men and women in the world in terms of temperament and interest are in Scandinavia, and they've maximized as a consequence of the, your egalitarian policies. What, what do you mean by that? It means that the more egalitarian your state, the bigger the personality differences between men and women. That's like the... It's the How do you measure that? How do you know that? Oh, well, psychologists have perfected 
at least to some degree, the measure of personality over the last 30 years with very advanced statistical models. And so what you do is you offer men and women well-validated tests of preference and of personality. And you do that all across the world with tens of thousands of people in multi-country samples. And then you look at the difference between men and women. And then you rank order that by wealth and egalitarian social policy. And what you find is the more egalitarian the society, the more different the men and women become. Okay, guys, so just before we get into the next bit, I think it's important to give some context here because it makes it all that much more sweet for Dr. Peterson. So the lady who is sitting across from him, constantly giving him these funny and absurd looks, is a leader of a Swedish political party named Annie Loof. So the fact that she is a politician and has some semblance of power when it comes to decision making should become increasingly worrying for the Swedish people watching this video as it goes on. And they look very shocked about what he's saying, but the reality reality is that it is just fact and anybody can go and look at these studies. I'll read you the abstract from one of them right now. Gender differences in personality traits across cultures. Robust and surprising findings. Secondary analysis of revised NEO personality inventory data from 26 cultures suggests that gender differences are small relative to individual variation within genders. Differences are replicated across cultures for both college age and adult samples and differences are broadly consistent with gender stereotypes. Stereotypes. Women reported themselves to be higher in neuroticism, agreeableness, warmth, and openness to feelings, whereas men were higher in assertiveness and openness to ideas. Contrary to predictions from evolutionary theory, the magnitude of gender differences varied across cultures. Contrary to predictions from the social role model, Gender differences were most pronounced in European and American cultures in which traditional sex roles are minimized. Possible explanations for this surprising finding are discussed, including the attribution of masculine and feminine behaviors to roles rather than traits in traditional cultures. So even by that abstract, guys, we can tell that the people who conducted this study were not exactly conservatives. I mean, basically no social scientists are except for Jordan Peterson. So basically, as societies get more free and egalitarian, and as people have more and more choice to pursue what they want to pursue, the differences between the interests of the sexes become more and more pronounced. Much to the dismay, of course, of the feminists who thought that this would actually lead to women dominating the field of engineering and the MBA. That her persistence is paying off. As Howard just blew the money, and the second one. And now they're going to jockey underneath. But there were actually some feminists, guys, that were savvy enough and honest enough with their predictions and actually saw this coming. In 1976, the French feminist icon Simone de Beauvoir said the following No woman should be authorized to stay at home and raise her children. Women should not have that choice because if there is such a choice, too many women will make that one. Now are you starting to see why the feminists go so hard at women who act like women? So now let's get on to the next bit where this Swedish politician gives her very high level and intellectual take on the matter. Is this something you can recognize or is it? <laughs> I would say it's, for me, it's quite a simple question, actually. Do we want that our uh, sons and daughters uh, should have the same opportunities and uh, uh, the, same, uh, uh, the si same dreams or hopes for the good thing or no? And for me, it's simple to ask that, uh, answer that. It's yes, of course. So for me, equality uh, and gender equality is very, very important. For me, also when we talk about gender equality, is important for me to learn my daughter that her mom uh, uh, can lead and show the way and her dad can hug and kiss her and show feelings. And I think that's something very important for the, the, the hoods where kids grew up to show feelings, to, to have these gender equality discussions, to show her a way of opportunities and to strive forward. And it's important both for uh, lonely men and lonely young men, but also for women that feel this, uh, this uh, roof of glass. Uh, they need to, to fight and to, to struggle the roof of glass to, yeah, to be uh, successful in their lives. Do you agree on this? 
I think yeah. that equality of opportunity is a perfectly reasonable proposition. I mean, I have a daughter and a wife. I do everything I put, and many, many female clients and who I've consulted with and helped, and, and in many cases uh, accelerated, helped accelerate the development of their career tremendously. It's obviously of great utility to encourage forward striving in, in young people and people in general. That, that, but, that's but, not the issue in the least. The, the why, issue why is the think... outcome. Yeah, well, then why do you think uh, the, the outcome and, and these countries where the outcome is, is, is more equal, why do you think that leads to a bigger differences between Oh, sectors? because there's only two reasons that men and women differ. One is cultural and the other is biological. And if you minimize the cultural differences, you maximize the biological differences. So I know everyone's shocked when they hear this. This isn't shocking news. People have known this in the scientific community for at least 25 years. And it's been replicated in the last month three times in three separate samples, including in Science, which is the world's greatest scientific magazine by a large margin. And it isn't a small effect. It's a huge effect. But, so, excuse me, what does it mean? Does it mean that Scandinavian men and women are having more difficulties meeting each other, talking to each other? than other places? No, not necessarily, but it does mean that there are reasons for differences in um, participation rates in different occupations that aren't a consequence of socialization. So, for example, this is especially true at the extremes. So, for example, um, on average, men are more interested in things and women are more interested in people. And that's actually the biggest difference we know of psychologically between men and women. And, and even though men and women are quite similar, all things considered, the extremes make a difference. So you imagine that in order to become an engineer, look, obviously not everyone becomes an engineer, you have to have a particular temperamental proclivity to become an engineer, you have to be extraordinarily interested in things rather than people. Well, most of those people are men. And if you want to become a nurse, well, then you have to be much more interested in people than you are in things. And most of those people are women. And so you get differences in occupational choice that are also, by the way, quite great in Scandinavia, especially in the case of engineering and nursing, that are mostly due to biological differences. And you cannot minimize that by social engineering. So, and, and it's not a bad thing. Like, look, one of the things you want to ask yourself is that what is the purpose of setting up a society that offers maximal equality of opportunity? And one of the answers is that you maximize people's free choice. And if you maximize free choice, then you also maximize differences in choice between people. And so you can't have both of those. But of course it will <clears throat> have, have differences in choice, of course, because we are human beings. But I can't see why it differs between uh, me and uh, Skavlan, for instance. But of course it differs in biological things, but not in choices, because I think more how we raise them, uh, how we live, uh, education, a sort of uh, culture, attitudes form a human being, uh, whether or not uh, they are uh, a girl or a boy when they grow up. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, if I raise my daughter to become a leader, to uh, be self-confident, to have a high education, for instance, I think she will have a good platform to become a civil engineer, to become a CEO of a company, or to become a nurse. If well, that, that, is what, that is what people who think that the differences between people who are primarily culturally constructed believe, but it's not what the evidence suggests. Okay, we don't agree on that. No, no, no. It's not so much that you don't agree with Dr. Peterson, it's that you don't agree with reality and you don't agree with truth. Even when she has a foremost expert in the field sitting in front of her face, telling her what the data unequivocally proves on this matter, she can't accept it because she has to maintain that if you just give Barbie dolls to boys when they're little kids, then they'll want to be ballerinas and nurses. And this is the problem with the woke feminist ideology. It doesn't matter about the truth. No amount of data will change their minds. It's about the ideology and it's about the sisterhood. And that's why when we watch this clip, we're actually able to physically see Jordan Peterson's words 
bouncing off of this lady's head in real time. And if you think about it, the reason why that people like this have to hold on to the idea that everything is just a social construct is because if they concede to the truth, then they have to accept the fact that men are bigger, stronger, better leaders, better providers and protectors, more suited to higher paying roles such as the STEM fields, meaning that they have a higher market value in the workplace than women do. And I could go on, but I won't. So instead of acknowledging the natural order of the world, they must continue to claim that it is just in fact the patriarchy that's been holding women down this whole time. And as soon as we can just tear down the patriarchy, women will be able to usurp the oppressive men. And the next bit is very funny because Jordan Peterson spits some facts that are grossly offensive to the woke brain. But before we get to this next clip, guys, if you don't mind just chucking a like on this video, help me get this far and wide and subscribe to the channel. Obviously, if you haven't already, would love to have you here. That would be fantastic. Back to the clips. Isn't the real problem that quite a lot of men and also young men are struggling to deal with the fact that women now are more in control of their lives than earlier? I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem is, is that the idea that um, the West is a patriarchal tyranny is rapidly translated into the idea that young men who strive forward are to be regarded with suspicion because they're doing nothing but manifesting the same sort of tyrannical power that has kept women oppressed for the last 2,000 years. And I think that entire narrative is appalling right to the core. So, and I don't see that it's helpful to anyone because making young men weak or, or, a lot, or, or failing to encourage them to be strong, that's a better way of putting it, certainly does the young men no good, and it doesn't do the young women any good at all if they want to find a partner. So you're saying that all along, <laughs> women and men have had the same opportunities, always? No, no, I'm basically saying that all along, hardly anyone had any opportunities. I mean, if you look at the history of the world, um, things really started to shift in about 1895, but. Before 1895, the typical person in the West lived on less than a dollar a day in today's money, which is about two thirds the UN cutoff for abject poverty by today's standards. And so what happened through most of the history of the world is that men and women struggled mightily together, sometimes at each other's throats, but mostly cooperatively, to keep the wolf from the door and the tyrant at bay. Life was very, 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 very difficult. And the fact that we survived it all meant that fundamentally we cooperated despite the fact that we're rife with stupidity, but, ignorance and malevolence. But what's so terrifying with gender equality? Nothing. Except when people gerrymander the data. It's like, what do you mean by equality? Do you want women to have their free choice or not? If you do, they're not going to pick occupations that are the same as the occupations men pick. But we have structures today that, that women need to struggle they need to, to uh, take a step uh, to, uh, to have the possibility to become like a prime minister. As we talked before, we don't have had any prime minister in Sweden that have been a woman, for mm. instance. Uh, we have a lower rate of uh, female entrepreneurs. Uh, mm. uh, men had a higher income than women uh, in Sweden, uh, even if they work with the same uh, tasks. And we uh, need that, to work that, with, that's one that I would dispute. We need to work dispute. with gender equality, I think, even in the lower class in schools, to learn kids how to uh, play with dolls <laughs> or how to... <laughs> boys have... <laughs> we, we need to... I, I think we need to learn boys to be more sensitive, but also uh, young girls to become more self-confident. And I think that's very important to Well, the problem, the problem with that... The problem with that is the data indicate that the consequence of the policies that you're promoting have maximized the differences between men and women. So that isn't what it's doing. Now, that isn't to say that the movement towards egalitarianism is necessarily a bad thing, but a tremendous amount of that's been driven not by social policy, but by technology. I mean, you know, the narrative that we're fed now is that up until 1960, when the enlightened feminists uh, developed their egalitarian doctrines, 
m men had kept women down and they finally rose. And the truth of the matter is, is that from about 1895 onward, there was a series of technological revolutions that were extraordinarily powerful in, in their impact that allowed women to step forward free of many of the burdens that had kept them back in the past. Birth control being one of them, but only, only, only one. Um, uh, uh, sanitary facilities of all sorts, plumbing had a huge role to play, tampons had a huge role to play, as did sanitary napkins. All of these technologies developed that enabled women to, uh, to, to, to move forward to move forward with, with, with less biological impediments, so, so let's what, say. What, what, I really, really can't with this lady. Jordan Peterson is a much, much more patient man that I am. And I can tell by his face, even though he is a patient man, that even he is on the edge. I would already be in the water by this stage. To learn kids how to uh, play with dolls or how to... Voice I am dead inside. Like, is this some sort of shock to her that the birth control pill, the thing that allows women to be able to put off having children for years and to ultimately pursue a career and other things has played a massive role in women's liberation? Do you really think that everything is just the result of some brave women marching in the street with their little signs? These people have really drunk the woke Kool-Aid, and it's almost just shocking to see sometimes. They really believe that if you just let boys play with some dolls, it would be the end of toxic masculinity forever. And indulge this little fantasy for a second, guys. I would love to have this lady sit across from me for the channel, cameras on, and for me to just tell her that boys don't need dolls, they need discipline. They need strong, masculine, father figures. They need to take responsibility and accountability from a young age. They need to learn how to fight. They need to be ambitious and they need to be ultimately competitive. I would just love to say that to her or somebody like her because there's a million of them out there, by the way, probably millions of them. And just watch the woke malfunction take place. But all we can do is stream, guys. Anyways, let's watch the next bit. What would you say is the best period in history to be both a man and a woman? Oh, clearly now. There's no, absolutely no doubt about that. Even, Anyone who would like to go you worry back. for the chaos. You, you worry about the chaos. Well, you know, it's nice if we could make things better than they are. And I would say that just as all around the world, we're raising living standards at a rate that is absolutely unparalleled in human history. We're also in danger of destabilizing our culture in the West. And, and I don't part, think that's a good that idea. Problem, part of that problem you, you called, uh, uh, you talk about there is, is, is what we call the identity politics. Yes, you, I think that any, poli that. Oh, any political position that puts someone's group identity ahead of their individuality is a regression to a kind of a regression to a tribalism that will definitely become violent. Because that's what happens what, to what's tribes. An, what, what's an example? You mean of, 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 Do you of, have an example? Of identity what, what, politics yeah. playing that role? Yeah. Well, it happens every time people divide, divide themselves into tribal groups. I mean, what we're trying to do to make peace is to bring people under the rubric of something approximating a single identity, a shared identity. And, I mean, the evidence that people fight in tribes, it's the, that's the entire evidence of the human race. And the farther back you go in time, and the smaller the tribal groups become, the higher the rates of inter-tribal warfare and the higher the rates of homicide. And, and, so, and this, the, the, you're talking about this, is part, I, I think it's part of why you also are, people feel some kind of ambivalence. Towards, towards you also. You, I mean, you, we call you controversial uh, from time to time. And um, I don't know, do you like that, being controversial? Do you enjoy uh, the, the provoking groups like... like uh... No, and I don't provoke people. I just say what I think, I just say you what I believe to people. be true. Well, that's... No, have I don't. You, have you ever I been say, online? <laughs> I say what I believe to be true, and people find that provoking. That's not the same as me provoking people. If I was provoking people, I would be setting out to upset them. And I'm not setting out to upset them. I'm just setting out to say what I believe to be true. And I'm a very... So you're following the, 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 the rule we talked about? Yes, and when I'm talking about gender, gender issues, for example, and personality, that's actually one of my 
my fields of expertise. I know the literature. And it says exactly what I said it says. And as I said as well, it's been replicated three times in the last month. The London Times came out three weeks ago and said that the finding that gender differences maximize as egalitarian policies are developed is now one of the most solidly grounded findings ever produced by social scientists. So, you know, you can make of that what you want. It's not something so, that I particularly enjoy. So, it just happens to be the case. So what are the fake news about Jordan Peterson? Oh, the, well, the, the fake news is one is that I'm provocative. Guys, when will Jordan Peterson and people like him ever learn that he's hurting people's feelings and they don't like the truth? It doesn't make them feel warm and fuzzy and cozy. So he's very, very controversial. And that is a bad thing. It's really not about the facts these days, guys. It's about the feels. So just put your little facts to the side if it's going to offend anyone. I think that's actually what life is like in Scandinavia. And let me know in the comments, guys, if you're from one of the Scandinavian countries. I mean, I've heard tales of what it's like over there, but let me know your experiences below. I mean, it can't be good if this is the attitude slash IQ of your politicians. I mean, this is not the sort of dialogue that belongs on a serious television show. This is the sort of dialogue that you find with first year university students in the lunchroom with purple hair eating tofu. And now onto the last bit, guys, where we'll watch a few moments, a few highlights, if you will, from the rest of the show. Now, Jordan Peterson has demonstrated that he's a patient man throughout this, more patient than I, as I've said. But I found this last bit even more astounding as he begins to actually win the panel members over, despite the fact that he didn't budge or acquiesce once, despite all of the fake news, the condescension and the smug looks. Let's check it out. One of the things that's so sad about what I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm going all around the world and I'm talking to many, many people. I've talked to about 250,000 people in the last six months and I offer encouraging words, you know, that people, I believe that people are stronger than their misfortunes. I believe that if you turn around and confront the vulnerability that's part and parcel of life, you'll find within yourself a strength that will transcend that. And I, I believe that not only to be true, but supported by the best clinical evidence. And that it's important for lost young people, male and female alike, to develop a vision and take on some responsibility and understand that they have a vital role to play in the world. That the lack of their best hurts everything. And I think that's true. And the sad thing is that very... There's very many people who have not heard an encouraging word in their life. And it takes so little to encourage them that it's rather tragic. You know, I have people come up to me, and I mean all, and by all the time, I mean many people every day in the lectures and on the street who tell me, I was in a bad place, I was struggling, I've been watching your lectures, I've been reading your book, I've put my life together, I'm trying to be responsible, tell the truth, things are way better, thank you. And so that's, can't, can't get any better than that. So, and that's, Can that's I? that. One last question, when, when are you irrational yourself? When I'm hungry. <laughs> what happens then? Um, Little things bother me far more than they would bother any reasonable person. <laughs> so that's, and I, I would say, if you find that you're irrational like that frequently, one of the things you might try is to eat something. So one of the things that I found most interesting and most inspiring actually about Jordan Peterson over the years is just how gracious and magnanimous he is in conflict. And as somebody who's been in debates and contentious situations on camera myself, I know how difficult that can be. And I think that what Jordan Peterson showed here and has showed many times for that matter is that you can have conviction, especially if your views are well found Grounded and grounded in truth, whilst at the very same time, not necessarily losing the people you're talking to. And I think that a lot of people struggle with that these days to traverse this crazy modern world where everything that you say, as normal as you think it is, 
can be offensive and you can lose friendships for saying the wrong thing. If you have a difference of opinion, people don't want to know from you in certain circles. And what tends to happen sometimes is that either we self-censor because we're afraid to offend anybody, and lose friends and relationships, or we just become that zealot. We just have that F you energy where we just say whatever we think at all times. We don't care what anybody thinks about us. And actually we end up making our cultural and political views our personality. And both of those options actually kind of suck. But Dr. Peterson is an example of somebody who is principled and says what he thinks without being insufferable. And in the best case scenario, if you can master this, if you can toe that line, then you will end up winning people over. So it for me today guys hope you enjoyed this video and of course you can find my links below and if you guys would like to subscribe to the channel of course you can click here and if you'd like to watch another video right here till next time i'm jake this is rattlesnake tv keeping you armed and dangerous